I knew this room was going to be hard, but I didn't know it was going to be this intense. Welcome back to another episode of Brew City Builds. Woo! If you're new to my channel, hey, my name's Marcel. I've been renovating this house that I bought with my boyfriend Ben over the past year, making over each room one by one. And we finally made it to the last room that needs to be done on this floor, which is the bathroom. It's been a journey to say the least. We have the entryway done, the living room done, the kitchen is done, the dining room is done, the hallway is done, the guest bedroom is done, and the primary bedroom is, you guessed it, donezo. I always hoped to move into a house that had the original mid-century bathroom with those amazing pastel tiles that I could just update the sink and the fixtures and kind of keep that original vibe of the house. But unfortunately this bathroom is pretty gnarly and it doesn't even have a shower so I'm gunning it. Luckily my mom is flying out from California for a couple weeks to help guide me through this process since I've never done anything like this before. She's a DIY queen so I'm super happy that she's coming out to guide me through this. She's not a huge fan of being on camera, so I can't promise that you'll see her much, but I'll definitely try to sneak her in when I can. She's gonna be here in a little over a week, and I have a bunch of trades coming to plumb in a new shower and do all kinds of other stuff, so I gotta get going on tearing this room apart. So enough of me talking, let's do it. All right, now that these little tiles are out from around the rim of the tub, I'm going to score the walls with the razor blade and then I'm going to pound out this plaster with a sledgehammer. It's good because I'm highly caffeinated right now, so I need to get some of this energy out. After taking those walls down, the tub was literally filled to the Bruh. brim with drywall and plaster, so it took me a couple hours to haul everything out with some buckets. I was totally dead after that, so I decided to stop for the day. But it's a new day, I feel revitalized and refreshed, so it's time to start taking everything else out of the room. Water break. All right, everything is out of the bathroom aside from the toilet. I wanted to leave that in as long as I could so that way we don't have to go up and down the stairs to use the bathroom, especially my mom. Aww. I have the rest of the trades coming this week. The plumber was already here and he rough plumb all the piping and holy moly, it's super exciting to see that we're gonna have a shower in there. He also did the shower head pretty high, so that's nice. The HVAC company came as well and moved the vent that was in the shower to the floor so now we can actually put up cement board and tile over that without having a vent in the shower. Now I'm just waiting on the electrician who's going to be installing the ceiling light as well as an exhaust fan so that way we can take a shower and it won't get super steamy. So a lot is happening. Now I get to start putting this place back together with some half inch cement board. We're also going to be putting in a little niche for the shower so I'm going to be installing some 2x4s as well as some quarter inch cement board for that little area. I've never hung anything but drywall before, so let's see how this goes. The cement board is up, that was intense, a lot of dust. 
I'm about to put on the thin set for porcelain tiles, but first I had to caulk with some silicone caulk and all the seams to make sure that it's super waterproofed. So yeah, I'm gonna mix all that together and then it's time to mud. So this step in the process is done. It was actually kind of fun. It was like icing a cake. Now I have to move on to taping and mudding off the drywall. I have to patch up those little holes that the electricians made when they installed the light slash fan, as well as some drywall patching that happened around the shower and just some other little holes and some damage to the walls that I want to mud. So yeah, and then once that's done, I can start putting on the waterproof membrane, which means we're one step closer to tiling. <laughs> Waterproofing membrane. All right, so the waterproofing's up, but there's been a change of plans. The way these walls are so bowed and the tub is so sloped and there's just really weird angles in here, it was super hard to do the cement board and I feel like impossible to do the tiles ourselves. We've been racking our brains trying to figure out how to do it, but I think I need to call in a professional. So yeah, now I'm just going to work on the walls, get those finished, and then we're going to move on to the floor. I have a tile guy coming tomorrow to do a consultation, and then we'll see how long it takes for him to actually come back and do the work. He's saying it'll at least be three or four weeks, but I'm hoping that isn't the case. I'm just going to press on with everything else in the bathroom, and then hopefully by the time all that stuff is finished, he'll be back to do the tile in the shower. I really wanted to do this myself, but it's just not in the cards. We are going to do the floor since that's totally flat and pretty square, so yeah, I'm going to get started on all the other stuff. Alright, so I just got a text and the bid from the tile guy. And it turns out he can come a lot sooner than I anticipated. He also gave me a really good bid with the floor included, so you know what? I'm gonna go for it. This bathroom is a lot, so I'm totally down to have somebody help take some of the stuff off the checklist. Bath renos are no joke. While I'm waiting on him, it's officially time to take out the toilet, the subfloor, and put in the tile board. Whoever did the subfloor before did it with like a particle board, so it smells like pee, first of all. DISGUSTING! And it's falling apart, so it's time for that to go. So once I finish up these errands, I'm gonna go home and Get started. Okay, so the electrician came and installed the light that I got from Lowe's. It's super simple and modern, but it also acts as a fan, so I'm into that. Loves it. Now it's time to paint these walls. Everything's already been sanded, so all I have to do is tape, prime, and paint. I bought a gallon of the Chantilly lace in an eggshell finish when we first bought the house, and I'm super excited that the day has come that I finally get to use it. I also have an accent color in here that I'm pretty excited about, but I'm not going to talk about it until I'm done with this part. Alright, so the walls are painted, so now I can finally get to the accent wall. I want to do a nod to those mid-century pastel bathrooms, so I decided to paint the bathroom pink. I'm a little nervous about it, but I went through a bunch of pink colors and found like a orangey kind of corally one, so I think it's going to look good. I usually wouldn't choose this color, but it's the bathroom, so why not? 
I don't want to do a tile backsplash behind the sink and the toilet because the space is pretty small and I think if I do a lot of tile with some grout it's just going to make it feel really cramped so I'm painting it instead. So yeah, I'm using the color Coral Mist by Valspar in the satin finish so hopefully that'll be enough to protect the walls. I think it will. is done. What do you think? Ben and I both really like it, so it's a keeper. Anyway, I was just thinking how some of you are probably going to think I'm a total trash person for leaving this hole in the wall. I could have just patched this with some drywall and some mud and make it disappear, but when I took that mirror down, I got kind of excited, hoping that there would be like some treasure or a letter or a photograph or something, but all there was was dust. So I was thinking that I should put something in there in the case that somebody redoes this bathroom down the road. I have a little collection of vintage magazines, so I thought I would pull a page from this 1984 17 magazine and put it in there with a little letter about Ben and I. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to whip it up and I'll show you when I'm finished. Alright, I think I'm finished. I got this 80s chick with her cherub little face fresh out of the shower, so it's fitting. The pink note on her forehead says this bathroom was renovated with love in August of 2021. I also included a little letter about Ben and I and the house and just our story. So hopefully someday someone will find it. It's time to close her up. Bye. I just got back inside from cutting, sanding, and priming these little wood pieces, so now I can finally install the window trim. The existing ones were a total mess, so I decided to rip them out and just start fresh. I'm going to be using a nail gun with one and a quarter brad nails to install these. Once these are up, I'm going to tape everything off so that way I can caulk, and then I'm going to prime and paint all the trim in the room. I have to go through this whole process again when I do the baseboards, but I can't do that until the tile's in, so for now I'm going to work on all this stuff. Waiting for the tile guy to show up. It's super early, but I wanted to make sure I had everything ready to go for them. My mom had to fly back to Cali at this point, so she doesn't get to see the final product when it's finished. But I know you're watching, so thank you so much for coming. You're the best house guest ever, and I love you. I don't know how long this process is going to take, but luckily for you, it's just a snap. All right, it's been three days, and look at this. I can't believe it. If I was to have done this, it would have taken way longer. Ben and I are both super happy with it, so that's a good thing. I feel like I'm sitting in the American Psycho bathroom. I don't even remember what that looks like, but it just kind of has that vibe. Now I can start on the baseboards. I already measured and cut them while the tile guys were here. I just have to mark the walls where the studs are so that I can attach them with some 2-inch brad nails with a nail gun. After that, I'm going to caulk, and then I'm going to prime and paint, and then I can move on to the next step. We're getting close. So I waterproof the grout on the tub surround as well as the floor. It was a super tedious process since there's so many grout lines, but I got it done. I actually made a little how-to video on it, so if you're curious about how to waterproof your grout, check the link here or here or wherever it is. Now I'm moving on to the final step before I can start moving everything back in. I'm going to be using some white silicone caulk to finish off everything and also make it extra waterproof. I'm probably being a little extra with this, but I taped everything off just to make sure that it's super clean lines. I'm trying to avoid the caulk from going in the grout lines, so I think this will help. Ben 
Ben's on his way home from work, so I'm gonna ask him to help me install the new sink, toilet, and medicine cabinet since I'm no good at reading and following instructions. I learned from the kitchen renovation with those IKEA cabinets that he has way more patience when it comes to this kind of stuff. The plumber's also coming in a couple days to finish up the work as far as plumbing the rest of the shower and the bathroom sink, so we gotta get it done. I got the matching brush nickel set for both the shower and the bathroom sink, so I think it's gonna look super nice. I was going back and forth on if I should do all black fixtures or brush nickel, but since the kitchen is already brush nickel, I'm going with that. Either way, I love everything that we got for this room, so I'll have everything linked in the description box below if you want to look into it more. finally have a toilet. Now that all the big stuff is in, I'm going to install these little glass shelves that I had made for the niche in the shower. I use this local company called Lumen's Glass. They literally had the shelves ready for pickup within a couple hours from when I called in the order, so I'm a big fan. I had to buy a right angle drill attachment because the space is pretty limited in that little spot, so I think this is going to make it a lot easier. I also had to buy carbide tip drill bits so that way I don't crack the tile. I already taped and marked off in that little spot, so now all I have to do is drill the holes and then I can install those little shelf brackets. I'm also going to be installing the closet door as well as the main door for this room. I already sanded them and painted one side while the towel is being installed, so now I'm going to hang them up and then I can finish them. The last thing I want to do today is hang the light switch plates. I'm very excited about this step because that means I'm officially almost done with this room. I just cut this little floor transition strip, which is the last thing I have to install in this bathroom. Once that's done, it's time for final touches. I think I've done everything I could at this point to finish the room, so let's take a look. The bathroom and the main floor are officially done. I know this video was a little on the longer side, so you rule if you made it through the whole thing. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm super happy with how this room turned out and I would love to hear what you guys think. If you want to give me some love, you can hit that like button as well as the subscribe if you aren't already. And you can press that little bell icon if you want to be notified when my next video comes out. Now that the main floor is done, we're moving upstairs. I have some pretty cool ideas that I want to do up there, but I'm also letting Ben kind of take creative control because he let me do whatever I wanted on this main floor. I'm pretty pumped for some upcoming stuff I had planned, so hopefully you'll join me on this little journey. All right, I know I've talked so much in this video, so I'm gonna go. But thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.
Bye.